a visual treat. That's just what Janet Jackson gives you. Or Jennifer Lopez. And how about Deborah Norville? What am I doing in a video? Well, we wanted to show you just what it takes to make one. We set out to show you that with the help of the right team, it's possible to transform me into a video star. Don't ever forget, your favorite singers have a lot of help looking and sounding fabulous. A video is a collaborative process, like any commercial, like any TV show, like any feature film. There's a, there's a team that's involved. They don't believe in me. At Soundtrack Studios in New York City, superstar producer DJ Junior Vasquez and his partner Gomi produced the single I Wrote, which has ultimately become my music video. It's a gas. I think it's fun for anybody to just to step out of the box that we've all put ourselves in. It's not always the geniuses behind the scenes either. You have to have something. Obviously, she has something. This is too early. The voice hasn't shown up yet. At the crack of dawn, I arrived at our New York studios ready to shoot a music video. Already the crew was putting together the set. Well, this story from the get-go has been about the magic makers. Where's that black dress? And days before, top fashion stylist Sydney Bolden, who recently worked with Destiny's Child, had pulled racks of clothes. Hey, this thing, look at this, you can do, you can do tricep curls with this dress, it's so heavy. How many extensions in my hair? I'm probably gonna end up putting like five pieces. Giving me mounds of hair, star stylist Satoro and Marco Marangello of the Orbe Salon. We're just doing stages. No. Singer Erica Badu doesn't make a move without the makeup help of Melanie Harris. Director Kevin Harry wanted a high fashion feel to the video. And the full song on the tight shot. Really? Now remember what this working mother of three looked like at 6 a.m. The transformation. A little more than two hours, and I've gone from being some schlob on the street to rock star. Cool, huh? <laughs> Now here's what you may not know. You've got to sing the song over and over and over again to get every possible camera angle. We've probably done it 25 times today, which means we must have done it seven. We've done it at least 100 times, and I don't think that's an exaggeration. We shot a party scene at the hot spot Lounge 179 on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. And we're still not close to finish. There's still something called editing.
me. And now that faith has set me free. Now nothing can hold me back. I'll just keep on keeping on. jumps around and he's faster than grease lightning and now Judson Lipoli is the hottest download on the internet with this crazy routine. The evolution of dance is the last 50 years of popular dances all in one six minute routine. You know there are certain people in this world who if you see them in an event things like that you know exactly who they are and then there are other people that people just literally will be like well what have you done? And now I didn't actually do it. I didn't, it wasn't something of a labor that caused that, but I at least always for the rest of my life will be able to say that I was the first YouTube viral video. And that carries some weight along with it uh, and a level of credibility that maybe didn't exist because now viral videos have become normalized to the point where people are impressed by that. Judson's evolution of dance has been viewed more than 20 million times in just two months. The best thing that YouTube did at the time is they had an incredibly easy user interface. When somebody approached me and asked me to put the video up onto my MySpace page, it was a group of high school students who want, I had taught them a small version of the dance and they wanted to do the whole thing. And I said, sure, how do you do that? And they said, we don't know. I said, okay. And YouTube had the easiest, cleanest, click here, pick file, upload, copy and paste. A motivational speaker from Cleveland, he came up with the routine to keep his audience entertained. The barrier to fame is so much lower than it used to be. It used to be in order to get famous, you had to do something extraordinary. You had to be in a huge hit movie, you had to write a great book, whereas now you can become famous, I don't want to say easily, but a lot easier than it used to be. And people like to have some sort of recognition and connection. <laughs> <laughs> we decided to take Judson to the biggest stage we could find, Times Square in New York City, where we showed each other some of our best dance moves. Back. You want to give him a little snarl? And it didn't take long before he was recognized. I bet you this isn't on your tour. And so at the time, it was really surreal because there were certain places that I could go where I was actually known as the person who did that dance uh, within a smaller community. Uh, of speakers and performers in the college market, which is where I was predominantly working at the time. And then to see that transition to a random bus of people in New York's, you know, at that time in New York City, and I was just like, oh, no way, I can't believe somebody else knows of this who didn't see it live. People always ask me the question, they say, how do you think your video would do if it came out today? I don't know how it would do. What I do know is the longevity of it would be but a fraction of how long the first one was because there was nothing else going on at that time. So I was really fortunate that there was nothing else to take the attention away, whereas a viral video today lasts a week, maybe, tops. If you try to reverse engineer it, if you try to ask, okay, what makes a video really go viral? I think one of the biggest factors is authenticity, that somebody's not trying to do something that isn't in line with who they are. One of the reasons that cat and dog videos are so popular is because they're not acting. You know, nobody can make a dog or a cat do all the crazy things that they do. They're just authentic. I'll always get to be that person that had the first YouTube viral video that is it's always gonna, they're never gonna be able to take that away from me. Quit playing games with my heart. Quit playing games with my heart. He 
these five young men are not playing games. Kevin Richardson, A.J. McLean, Nick Carter, Ryan B. Rock Luttrell, and Howard Howie D. DeRoe are the Backstreet Boys. We don't have a lead singer. Um, we all sing, so I'm just a member. That's all I am. They may be the hottest singing group in the music world today that most adult Americans have never heard of. We're from Europe and they're really famous there. The Backstreet Boys have been heartthrobs to teenage girls throughout Europe for more than two years. MTV, thank you. They won the coveted MTV European Viewers' Choice Award in 1996, beating out both the Spice Girls and Oasis. Ding dong. The harmonic sound isn't exactly new. But some critics say the Backstreet Boys' style is fresh. It definitely has that 90s twist to it. It's got that R&B style, it's got a heavy beat, and it's got a lot of energy in a way that I don't think a lot of groups have. The group, ages 17 to 25, are from Orlando, Florida and Lexington, Kentucky. They got together through their common interest, music. I heard that there was a vocal group that was looking for another singer, so I hooked up with AJ. Nick and Howie, and then I brought my cousin Brian into it, and we've been together now for almost uh, five years. The boys figured they'd have more success launching in Europe, and so far, they've reportedly sold more than 10 million albums in 35 countries, sold out a concert tour of Canadian cities in less than an hour, and have starred in seven music videos. There's no place like home. Now they're trying to make it big in the USA. This past spring, they released their first American album. One song soared as high as number two on the Billboard Hot 100 singles charts. Late last month, they completed a whirlwind 10-day U.S. tour. The uh, turnout has been great. The crowds have been great. It's awesome. While their harmonizing has received mostly praise, early reviews of their live U.S. performances have been mixed. And some critics say the appeal is strictly for the kiddies. But those kids, the ones who buy the albums and the concert tickets, are already saying the Backstreet Boys are here to stay. Oh, they're going to be big for a while.